From RCN, Columbia's leader in news, this is RCN News in English, bringing Columbia to the world. Good afternoon, everybody. Brian Andrews is off today. Now let's check what's making news in Colombia this afternoon. We begin at the Casa de Nariño with President Álvaro Uribe Vélez said again this morning, his government is studying the possibility of declaring the interior commotion to face the negative effects of the judicial strike sector. Colombian President Álvaro Uribe Vélez reiterated once again that interior commotion could be applied to prevent criminals going out of jails due to the judicial sector strike. Government is studying this option because the strike has left more than a month and thousands of criminal cases are stuck in the courts. The strike has also affected adoptions in Colombia and even local government elections like in Pueblo Nuevo, Cordoba, where in August a judge ordered the local government not to keep going alleging corruption in the process. As the judge is now on a strike, there has not been a new election. We need to solve this problem and clean up the courts. President Uribe highlighted the effort his government is making trying to maintain the economic confidence in the market too. He said it's important to let foreign businesses invest in Colombia without having to pay the 50% of deposit to the government as they do now. Mr. Uribe finally said this is a good strategy to avoid the negative effect of the global economic crisis. In this moment we need to guarantee economical solvency and financial resources. Finally, President Alba Uribe said he will not let the fear to invest arrive to the national market. Nine properties belonging to a criminal ban in Medellin were seized by the police today. After more than 18 months of investigations, authorities revealed how the ban operated. They use a gold exchange business to launder thousands of dollars. Fifteen elect members of the criminal band were arrested during the police operation. Forty apartments, houses, lots, and even a small plane were taken by the police today. Authorities said these properties cost more than 5,000 million de pesos. All of them are located in Medellin. Now a story involving a new horrible method the park is using to put mines and carry dangerous materials. Police discovered they are taking advantage of mentally ill people. Let's bring our Samara Garcia with the story. You're right, Ana Maria. These people have no mercy. Once they attached to a lady's neck a color bomb, and of course it exploded. Then we knew about the way they used donkeys as bomb carriers, and now they took advantage of a mentally handicapped person. Colombian Army considers that FARC has many different war methods. They know no boundaries and are not compassionate at all. He is the one. He has been like this all his life since he was a kid. Her cousin is the latest FARC victim. He cannot talk. His movements are limited. He gets mad when gets a bath, but it is easy to control. Her cousin is mentally ill. It's been two months since I last saw him in my house, until now that I come to see him. He got lost, and because of his bad fortune, he fell into the hands of the gorilla. They abused him in an irrational way. We found this person in black clothing, with a backpack with explosives. Taking advantage of his medical condition, he got tricked and was used to plant a bomb mine in the rural area of San Jose de Isnos in Huila. There are many hypotheses of the way they take advantage of these people. They use this type of person to walk through the army as messengers or to take explosives. A medical exam confirmed his mental age does not correspond to his chronological age and that he is really ill. It was proved that he cannot be charged. Because of his condition, there will be no charges against him. He is already with his family and is the most vivid example of the FARC cruelty. As you can see, Ana Maria, this is why Colombian president calls this organization a terrorist group. This is RCN News. I'm Samara Garcia. Well, now turning again to Bogota, it is not a secret that Colombia's capital is pretty cold and that we have many people living in the streets. That's why police came up with a great idea to help them warm up a little bit. Oliver Iglesias has the story. In Latin American societies, poverty has stimulated the increasing of hungriness, and of course, Colombia is not the exception. For example, from 100 children under the age of five, 12 suffered the severe consequences of malnutrition in our country. Bogotá Police Department began a special campaign early this morning. They decided to feed with agua, panela, and bread 
at least 5,000 homeless all around the city to prevent them of getting sick due to extreme cold weather during early mornings in Bogota. We want to give them some special attention with a hold of Pamela and a big smile. Thousands of people live in Bogotá's streets and they say they are really happy with this new plan. The breakfast is great with Penn's police. This is exactly what I needed. Thanks to Uribe for helping the homeless. For many people, this was the perfect opportunity to breakfast after many years. Tomorrow, we'll continue this journey right in southern Bogota. For our CN News in English, this is Oliver Iglesias. Back to you, Ana Maria. I'm Ana Maria Hernandez reporting from Bogota. We leave you today with a special concert the famous musician Cabas made at the White House in Washington today. That's RCN News in English for Thursday afternoon.